G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, it's bloody cold. <laughs> We're seven degrees this morning, which is, look at that's, we don't get much lower here normally. Um, a normal winter we get six, seven, eight sort of thing and that's about as cold as it gets. Um, 19 the top today, so that's telling us it's probably going to come over a bit overcast and bit of a shitty day. Um, there's a cold front coming from the west of Australia through and it's going to come in this week. And um, yeah, so this week, uh, no rain, just cold temperatures. Um, sunny, yeah, some days I've, I've just had a look because we're going, to, going up to the QHR in Biloela on Thursday. And so I've been having a look at the weather, seeing what we need to take for clothes and things like that. So where we've got our seven degrees this morning, it feels like four and a half, they say, and 19 max. Well, when we get to Biloela, um, twos and threes, and, um, but it looks like mid-20s, you know, early 20s, 22, 23 through the day. But what, um, what the troublesome part is out there uh, from in the past is um, you get a, a sou'wester breeze and it is cold and, yeah, it goes straight through you. Um, uh, not not new, pardon me, not usually a big wind, but just a breeze, and that puts a chill into you. So, um, I've got the we've got the new Queensland tractor spares gazebo behind the camera there, and when we bought it years ago, we actually bought four walls that we can tie together, and I, I just zippy tie them onto the posts nowadays, and um, yeah, tie them together, and that blocks the breeze. So. Hopefully through the day you can find a bit of sunshine and um, sit in the sun out of the breeze a little bit and give us a little bit of protection. So, um, but anyway, we're going to have the Queensland Tractor Spears gazebo standing up there for a bit of shelter, um, keep us out of, the, out of the sun and we'll probably have a couple of little walls up just to stop that mother-in-law's breath breeze coming in. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. But this last week... Oh, uh, what a week. <laughs> um, here I am Monday morning after a weekend and I'm bloody knackered. Um, just been busy all weekend. Um, last Monday I had to run into town and we had a meeting with the, um, one of the fellas for the sound system, you know, the PA, public address system, for the rally next year. And we had a walk around with Mel and um, had a look at what we need. And, um, it's quite a large ground and we want two microphones that we can walk around with so um, we can have people have a rest from talking but if someone's up doing the grand parade then um, they can turn off and the next person can be down at the tractor pull and do a bit of commentating on the tractor pull and um, walk around to the um, various um, trade exhibits or um, you know, the engine compound you know, find out what's happening so um, we've had a had a meeting with him last Monday afternoon and as, when I do the stew I've got to pack up, lock the shed up and head to town and um, I'll, ha I'll have a bit of time. Um, about half past nine this morning I've got to be in town and there's another one that did the car show, a sound system provider that did the car show recently and look they did a great job but they the car show, the Heritage, oh, they call it the Heritage Car Show I think it was, um, they did it, and um, but they they just had a corded microphone under shelter. They didn't feel the need to walk around. But we sort of think that's you know when the tractor pulls on or something, you can tell people come and see the tractor pull and um, get down there having a chat. So anyway, well we have to go in there for a meeting there this morning, and I'm just going to pop over to Lowe's and buy some more jeans. I think um, <laughs> I went into Lowe's to buy some jeans for going away, and. Um, I've got quite a few pairs of jeans. I wear shorts a lot through summer, but I do have quite a few pairs of jeans. But Jude goes crook that they all look the same after I've had them for a few months. And, you know, they all got bits, <laughs> bits of bloody grease on them or stains or something. And I said, well, that's because I'm a working bloke. But <laughs> I get up the shed and I wear me tidy duds to work. Then I come home in the shed and she says, yeah, but, yeah, you've probably got eight, six or eight dozen pairs of jeans um, tucked away. Um, well, I wouldn't have a dozen, probably six or eight anyway, jeans tucked away and she says they all look the same, all got little stains and 
nicks and things like that. And I said, well, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <coughs> I, mean, I went to Lowe's the other day to try and buy another pair of jeans just to go away, you know, to have tidy jeans because so I don't always look the same. <laughs> and, um, they only had one pair there. So while I'm in town this morning, I'll pop around and see if they've got another set in yet and um, see how we go. So um, just so I got bloody warm duds that, that don't look like I've been in the shed all morning. <laughs> anyway, things that worry, I wouldn't give a toss, really. <laughs> a little bit of a mark on me jeans, but he, yeah, it's um, no big problem. Um, but yeah, this weekend it's just gone. Oh, through the week, the distributor came for the Ford 2000, and um, I've got that fitted to the Ford 2000, but um, as for work in the shed, just bloody nothing, really. And um, I just haven't, haven't had time, you know, just been very busy. And um, so, yeah, Monday we had the meetings in town. Then um, I think Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember now, I got the distributor for the Ford 2000. So I come home and I was all excited to put that in. So it's in and I've got a coil. I've shifted the coil bracket. The coil used to be around the outside where the steering arm could hit it. So I've put it back where it should be. But it seems an odd thing to do. The coil actually sits underneath the carb. So if you had a flooded carb, it could dribble onto the, just onto the coil, which is um, a bit of a silly idea. Um, Massey Ferguson had that on the early T20s. And you notice the later T20s, they had a bit of a kick down that side of the tank just to let the fuel run off. Um, and the story was there that, um, that yeah, the fellas had fuel the tank up going for a cupper and it had expanded a bit from the heat of the engine and then um, they'd have a fire. Excuse me. I got that, I got that cold morning nose happening. <laughs> so anyway, um, so yeah, the distributor is in. I'm pretty sure it's timed okay. Um, the lift pump is in. The Fuel pipes have been all broken and bent off, but I'm, I'm getting bits of the old ones there and I'm trying to work out exactly where they would sit with the lift pump and bring them around and, um, you know, adapt it to hoses. But I, look, I just haven't had time to play this weekend. <coughs> the, um, I have a new exhaust manifold for it. Um, C5NE9430E. So... That's a good thing. Um, yeah, it looks okay. This is actually a Bearco one. It was just a quicker way of getting one. Um, Bearco had it, and we had a we had an order coming up, so I just dropped it, dropped that on. Um, so we've got the manifold there. Um, I don't think I'll get time this week to have a look at it with packing up to go away. Um, Saturday morning, um, I started to get the well i had to get the john deere 420 going the high crop going and get it out so i could get the forklift in and get the canopy for the back of the ute to put on the back of the ute for going away <coughs> i mean and instead of just chucking all the stuff in the back of the ute like the gazebo and the chairs and things like that um, if we pop them in the back of the ute well it's nice and dry and you don't get dust on them and things like that so um so i got the john deere out and I thought, well, while it's out, I better take it for a run around the paddock. So I, I left it out Saturday evening and um, got the canopy well washed and on the back of the ute and bolted down and all that sort of thing. I got the awnings off. We don't need awnings for this trip. And um, young Arrow, the grandson, he's been on to me and on to me about Poppy. When are we going fishing? And he's been on for ages. And last time he was here and he's with Tim every fortnight. Um, it was a rainy, shitty, wet weather, and we said, oh, if it's fine, next time we'll go fishing. So anyway, Saturday was a beautiful day, so I said to Jude, well, we better get this bloody boat down. And So I got the boat down and give it a run, serviced it up, made sure it was right to go. Then um, Tim and Ellie and the kids come over for dinner Saturday evening, so um, Arrow had a sleepover at Poppy's, Grandma and Poppy's. So, yeah, <laughs> he said, when are we going fishing tomorrow? And I said, oh, you know, early in the morning, you know, we'll get going early before the wind comes up and off we'll go fishing. And so 5.30 in the morning, he's coming into the bedroom. Hey, Poppy, it's morning. And I said, oh, the sun's not even up yet, mate. 
yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure it's up, he says. It's, I can see it light outside. I can see things. And I said, yeah, but the sun's not up. It's just the glow. And No, no, that's good enough. We could go now. And I said, no, we're bloody not. We're going to have a cuppa and all that. I said, wait till we see the sun come up. So the sun comes up around 6.30 in the morning at the moment. And so, oh, well, he said, I watch TV. So he watched telly and I tried to have a sleep in, but of course you can't after that. So we um, had a cuppa and off we went down the river and then Grandma followed us up later with, a, with some sandwiches. And so we jumped in the boat and went up the river and, oh, the bloody wind, holy. So um, the thing about being a w in a river with it curling around and that, you can always find a little, a little spot out of the breeze. So we found a couple of nice spots out of the breeze and we fished for an hour and a half, two hours, I suppose, in the boat. And... The, Tim and Ali and the other kids were going to come down and we're going to have a picnic on the grass, but it was just too bloody cold and you know, it was just blowing its ass off and it wasn't that pleasant. So, um, so after we did the fishing bit, um, caught a catfish and, um, oh, bloody this long, I suppose. And um, I caught another one and I had it on the line and I said, here, Arrow, you want to wind this in? Give him a bit of a play. So he's trying to wind her in but then he's buggering around and looking at something else and the line's loose and next thing it's spat it so he missed out on that one so doesn't matter so um so yesterday morning yeah we we come home and he he was worn out you know he, he was getting grumpy and bloody bit stirry towards the end of it and come on we're going i don't want to go and I'm bloody you do what you're told <laughs> we're going now and um so anyway, yeah, he come home and bloody sat down and had a sandwich and watched a bit of telly. Then um, next thing, Tim and Ellie turned up with the kids. So um, with the other kids and the John Deere was out and young Freya's been wanting to drive on the tractor. So I said, oh, I'll go and get the tractor. And so the boat come up the back here to be washed. And, and then the, um, yeah, we took the John Deere down and I, I put on the Bundy Bear Shed Facebook page, the, um, the uh, Ariana, she was, she's 10 and, um, She'd be 11 in December and um, yeah, she had a drive of her own and um, yeah, which is good. She's, she's well capable. Yeah, she's, she understood what was going on. Then um, yeah, Arrow had a go with me standing on the drawbar and then um, Ariana wanted to go a faster gear. So she had about three or four turns or something. And um, so yeah, so in the faster gear, I, I stood on the drawbar you know, just between the arms and um, the jarring around, <laughs> just got a bloody sore knee this morning, <laughs> just buggering around. And um, so yeah, Arrow had a couple of goes around and everyone had a go. And young Freya, she wouldn't hop on with Poppy, no way. And um, so I said to Tim, oh, you want to jump on? So he jumped on with her and well, after three laps of the paddock, we couldn't get her off. Yes. <laughs> so he said, come on, Harry's want to turn. No, no, I stay here. And so anyway, got her off and um, can't have him chucking a paddy. And um, yeah, everyone had to take turns. So, but that was a good fun. Yeah, we got a few little videos of it and that. So um, yeah, by the time that was it, it was after lunch, and then Mum messaged and said she was coming around. So yeah, just put the telly on for half an hour. And Mum was there, and um, so yeah, about half past three, we actually got back outside, and um, we got the boat washed, and I've got the boat backed in here in the hoist bay, but and all washed and everything, but. Um, I haven't got it up on the hoist yet out of the way where it lives normally and um, so I have to do that today. Um, I have to drop the Queensland Tractor Spares gazebo and get it all in. We've bought a nice new cover for it and get that in the ute all ready to go. Um, I've put the different tow bar on the, um, on the ute to suit the car trailer that I take the tractors in and um, so this afternoon when I come back from town um, the trailer goes on the ute, I bring the ute out the front here, then I lift the trailer up, the back up with the forklift, and I make sure all the bearings are free and pump the tyres up and make sure everything's good. Um, put the battery in for the emergency brakes and do all that sort of stuff. So, so I'll have that all ready, so um, probably Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, the tractor will go on and be chained down, and Thursday morning we'll be heading off early. So we're all looking forward to it. Um, yeah, it's a... It's a pretty big event and we're, um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to getting up there, having a chat with everyone, meeting my new people and having a muck ass around. So, yeah, great fun. Um, I've got this bar drilled for the grill. So that's looking pretty fancy. 
I haven't done any more on the bonnet. I just, I don't know, just no time. And um, yeah, just just busy, and that's all right. It's good being busy, but I'm at the stage now where I've got tools here, I've got tools there, I've got tools out on the Ford 2000, I've got tools on a box inside where I bring them in of a side, so. Okay, <laughs> I just had a phone call from Alan, Alan Risley, and um, Alan's 80 shortly, and he's, he's the club secretary, and he's been helping me um, with the rally coordination stuff, and... Um, yeah, he, he does the office work sort of thing, and um, well, look, he's just a, a huge help. But um, <coughs> pardon me. And um, when, when we go in to um, talk to the sound people, um, we usually travel as a pair. Just I don't know you can just talk to each other better, and, and you know he mightn't think to ask something, and I might, and just work as a team. But yeah, that was Alan, and Alan's crook today. Um, he has, um, he said he had asbestosis a couple of years ago and um, it sort of was better but his missus is in hospital at the moment, Diane's had cancer a couple of times now and it's come back a bit and um, yeah this morning he reckons he just can't breathe so um, he reckons he thinks the asbestosis bit might have come back. So um, anyway, so he's just ringing me now to say that he can't make it into the meeting with the sound bloke today so it's me on my own and that's fine. Um, yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, he gets the rest up and, um, yeah, things come good for him, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we've got a couple of great members at 80 years old, Alan and um, Jean, she's, that does the fundraising, she's 80, and, um, yeah, good minds and all that sort of thing, but, yeah, old age takes its toll. Mum reckons yesterday, oh, this getting old's no good, <laughs> but that's how it is. Um, so yeah, I'll have to meet the fella in there today and um, have a chat, so that's all right. Um, hopefully Alan comes good. He, he just sounded bloody terrible. Um, through the week also, um, LSA sent us up some oil and they sent us up a couple more things, signs. So those signs, um, one's going to go at work and I'll... I'll find another place. I've got signs around the shed here, so I'll put this around the shed. So um, I haven't got room where the other LSA oil one is up the top there. Um, this would just be too big and come down and get dirty down there. So um, so I'll get that. Uh, I'll put this around the shed so when I'm, say, filming the 65, you can sort of see it in the background. And the other one will go in at the shop. And, um, yeah, it'll... Um, I'm not sure where in the shop. I can't, I can't remember where our other LSA sign is. But we got a big oil order in last week and um, we've got a couple of 44 gallon drums of um, farm oil, 1540, which is, look, just about everything gets that here. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a good oil. Uh, the, I, I did a, <laughs> while I was working on the weekend, um, through the week, I'd have the CNC router in the background going, so I've done a little run. Um, I had a board. Oh, it's, well, what I'm using is this, um, um, it's a board from Bunnings and it's a laminated board. And I've been playing with that a bit, but I'm not that happy with it. I'm, I'm actually gonna look for some, um, some boards that are um, not laminated because we've got a couple of boards up home we've been fiddling with and they come loose. and. Um, one of the boards I made the other day um, where it was laminated, the glue let go and I've glued it all back and I've put it through the thicknesser and um, just made a board for Jude out of it just so we can monitor how it goes but I'm not 100% happy with it all. Um, yeah, just one of those things. <laughs> yeah, I'll, um, spotted gum it is and I, I, I don't mind a spotted gum. It's a nice, it's, it's a heavy board and I sort of like that. Um, Jude doesn't like the big boards in spotted gum too heavy, but um, but anyway, I've, I've had a fiddle with that, and that just goes on in the background. Um, um, yeah, after work sort of thing. It, I, if I'm well, when I was doing the distributor out the front, well, I just set the CNC up and away it went, and um, yeah, it can just do that in the background. So yeah, no big deal. But but yeah, I, I got I got just bugger all done over the weekend. Now today, um, like I say, into town and and. Um, I do have to shift the Massey 20 bonnet, and I haven't done any more on the bonnet, I've just been trying to get that forward going. Um, so I've got to get it out of the way, 
get the 135 out, give it a bath. Um, yeah, give it a bit of a tidy up for the show, which should be okay. Get the trailer done. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a busy week. And um, yeah, so I'll be at work Tuesday, Wednesday this week, two days for the week. Um, and yeah, I'll try and catch up there. But when we go away, though, I do take the laptop and I do try and look after emails and YouTube messages and all that sort of thing. But um, there won't be any extra videos this week. Um, I do have the drone charging up over... It. It just needs a top up the drone. Um, I do have the drone over there and I might try and pop it up at Billa Wheeler and see if I can get a um, bit of an overall picky of it for you just to show you, um, show you the, um, the, the setup of the area. Um, well, through the week, I went out to the auction centre. There was a Massey Ferguson 550 um, little tractor out there for sale. And um, the Kemp family was looking at it and I said, oh, you want me to go out and have a bit of a toodle around and have a look at it? And they said, oh, if you had time. So I thought, oh, well, off I went. So I went and had a look. And um, at these auction centres, you know, like um, it had been there for a while, this tractor. And I went and saw Bill, the auctioneer fella, and he said, oh, you're going to have to jump start that. So he gave me a little jump start, lithium jump start pack. And I went out and had a look at it. And um, uh, here they are, like they're trying to sell this tractor at auction on the Saturday morning and the bloody thing wouldn't start. You know, you, you hooked the jump start on it at the start and it started really quickly and well and the hydraulics worked and all that. But um, I said to Bill, I said, there's no power steering and the steering wheel just go round and round and round, hydrostatic steering. And he said, oh yeah, but it's just run out of oil. And I said, yeah, but it's not, it's, it's got no oil in it now, Bill. When, when you, someone's looking at it, they'll say the power steering doesn't work. Oh, they just got to put oil in it. So, and he said, oh, I sat over under the tree there for quite a while since last auction. And um, you can see on the ground where it leaked the oil out. So it's just got a leaky ram. No big deal. And I'm thinking, no big deal. You, know, you would think if you were trying to sell a tractor, you'd, you'd give it a wash or whoever owned it even. Um, go out there the day before the auction, top the power steer and up, put a new battery in, charge the battery up, do whatever you had to do. So someone could hit the key and have a bit of a drive and things like that. So I went and had a look at it. <coughs> Pardon me. And um, look, uh, it was a bloody good tractor to do up. Yeah, like the engine was good, the hydraulics were good, the brakes didn't work, nothing, no problem there. The power steering didn't work, but we, I was pretty sure we knew the problem. Battery was no good. But the panels for a 550 were pretty good. And so anyway, so I sent Russell a little video and oh, actually it's on my... It's on my laptop now. I'll, I'll see if I can just put a little bit of that in at the end of this little tractor. And Bill said, oh, what, what do you reckon we'll get for it? And I said, oh, three, four? He said, oh, no. He said, you've got to get five to get that one. And I said, oh, OK. So anyway, had a yarn to Russell. And um, yeah, they thought that was OK. So they come over and Russell messaged me Saturday afternoon. He says, oh, no tractor's going back to Gainda today. Um, the um, I went for seven, seven and a half plus GST, so plus ten percent on top of that. So um, yeah, it just wasn't worth that. Um, yeah, it, it really wasn't. The tyres were about twenty percent, maybe. Um, it had the heavy car centres on it, which um, look, they're probably off a of thirty-five. I thought looking at them, um, but next to it, there's a multi-power sixty-five low clearance with power steering on it, and. It's been, it's been there for ages. Like it's been quite a few auctions and I was talking to him about that. And here, here it's presented with a flat front tyre and <laughs> things like that. And I'm thinking, God, if that was my tractor, I'd be over there with the ute, pump her up and bloody, you know, make it look nice. And um, he said, oh, you have to get five grand to get that one too. And I said, oh, okay. But I, I didn't go to the auction. I've, um, I'm sort of tracked it up just at the moment. <laughs> and, um, but there was a far more... A farm all AV there, and it was the shittiest looking tractor. I'll see if I still have a photo of it. Um, the shittiest looking tractor, um, the worst paint job. It had car rims on the front. I don't know what the back rims were off. They weren't off a bloody farm all. Um, well, I don't think they were. And it had a terrible coat of paint on it. And um, anyway, Russell was on the message where Russell was telling me he didn't buy any tractors. Um, yeah, got passed in at two grand and. 
we thought it was a $500 special. So I might be right out of touch, I don't know. But anyway, um, this bar mall, what a heap of shit. And um, passed in at two grand. So old mate that was selling it um, wanted over two grand for this thing and it was just a heap of junk. Um, yeah, terrible. But anyway, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> Well, oh, some people think they got gems when they got bloody, you know, ag um, oh, granite or something like that, don't they? Yeah. Anyway, doesn't matter. All right, I'll go for a quick walk around. I'll just show you the distributor on the tractor. Um, I've got new oil out there ready to go, or the filter ready to go. I've got the glycol, the coolant ready to go. But I, I do have to cut a bit of tubing. Um, I can buy the bottom radiator hose but the top radiator hose is one I just can't seem to get hold of. So I've got one off another 2000 and we're gonna, gonna have a, a right angle, then a piece of straight hose going up and um, probably a little bit of tube, exhaust tube or something inside that we'll paint up, um, seal it up with a bit of zinc or something like that and um, see, and, and with glycol in it, we should be okay. Um, but yeah, look, that's, that's after I've got everything else done, so I doubt that it'll be today, um, the way things are going. Um, we'll just work with what we got and yeah, go from there and see. Um, but the main thing this week's pack up ready, make sure we've got everything in. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of Sparex hats that they've sent up. I've got a couple of Sparex beanies and um, things like that that James sent up for us. So I've got to put the... Um, I've got to put the modern type flashing light on the tractor once I get it out where I can get up on it and we'll put the new one on and we'll, we'll have a bit of a walk around that when we're up at Billa Wheeler. Um, that's about it though I think. Yeah, main thing's just I've got to put all the oil outside, um, clear the bonnet out of the way, get the 135 out, then I can poke all the stuff back in where the 135 is for a day or two, then just have the 135 in the doorway so when I come to load up, it's not sitting in the trailer all week. Um, I went to STR Trailers in Bundaberg last week to get a quote on a new trailer. Um, yeah, my old trailer, we were just talking about it this morning at breakfast, Jude and myself, and it was the old man's mate and he parked up and I bought it off the estate sort of thing, but that must be 15 years ago or more, and it was first registered in 1973. So um, being registered in 73, it's, yeah, uh, look, it's been a good trailer. It's got four ton suspension under it, and that. But you just don't know what it's looking like down inside there. So um, I thought, well, coming up, we're paying a fair bit of tax. Coming up, I'll probably look and get a nice new trailer. Um, look, just a simple one. The old one was a ten by six box trailer that I've I've adjusted um, to suit myself. But um, the other one's just going to be a flat top car trailer, um, Land Cruiser stud patterns. Um, parallel axles, you know, the stronger axles for cart and tractors. Um, the fold down ramps that I have now because I, I like that. I don't like sliding the big ramps out and getting them up. I just like to be able to drop the ramps and away we go. So they're coming in with a quote this week for that. Um, I'd probably like to have a new trailer by the time we go to the um, Fergie muster down at um, Bendemeer in March next year. So um, and he said, oh, how urgent are you? And I said, I'm not urgent. I'm just starting to do my due diligence on, on the thing just to, um, yeah, get a quote in and just see how we go. So um, we've got plenty of time to get it made. And, um, yeah, we'll just go from there. Oh, the DO35 hitch, which is a new... It's the heavy-duty caravan hitch with the universal joints. You know, it, it pivots in all directions sort of thing. Um, at the moment, I've got a McHitch one that I took off the camper because I put a DA35 on the camper, so we'll see how we go. So, All right, well, that's enough waffle from me. Um, I'll take you for a quick walk with the camera, just just show you the mess. And <laughs> as, as Barry says, your time is much appreciated. Thanks for dropping by. And, um, yeah, we'll catch you all next week. Hopefully we have a bit of rally footage for you. See yous.
panels are pretty good when you have a look pretty straight a little bit of rust in the floor there but the rest of the platform's pretty good roll frame and all's okay doesn't appear to be too much rust there it's got a Beko or something aftermarket seat on it the back tyres 25% maybe linkage looks good unworn pretty well hasn't been on there for use I don't think even the holes up here are worn a little bit not much the 65 here it has multi-power and power steer low clearance been here for a few auctions I know that one so that's the mess there I've had to shift the John Deere trailer and my chair and you get the boat in once I get the boat up on the hoist again out of the way it will be good there um, yeah um, I like it up high and then I can walk under it and then the mower parks under the boat so that sort of works well um, but as for swinging around yeah there is junk everywhere at the moment and first job get that all packed away it should be good by now and this is the stuff farm oil 1540 um, I like to keep my oil up over under in the pallet racking so I've got to make space and get the little decks to moving so I can get that out. The bonnet here, that's as far as I've got with that at the moment. I just haven't had time. The other week it was too shitty to paint and now the weather wouldn't be too bad for painting but I haven't got time to do it. The, the John Deere is back where it lives. The, the stuff that was in front of the John Deere is now in front of the Massey so it's got to go back in front of the John Deere so I can get the 135 out to take away for the weekend. And I've had this box near the door and everything just gets sat on that box. Yeah, you know, when I'm working outside, it gets sat on the box so it's in out of the weather for the night. So <laughs> I suppose, does everyone have that much mess? So then, yeah, there's the little distributor. She's all bolted up. Um, this wire here is way too long, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it there till we get a start. Um, and yeah, the coil is supposed to sit on this bracket under the carb. Oh shit! Um, under the carby, which is I don't know, just a silly idea. It was old mate had the tractor. He had the coil out here, and it sat out here. But I was a bit worried about it. Um, yeah, sort of getting hit out there. So yeah, not the best. <coughs> not the best idea. And yeah, the pipe from here down to the carb we haven't got that and I've rung up Ian and asked him he was going to have a look but I haven't heard so we'll just have to see I suppose see what happens there um, I've got the guy coal sitting there ready to go I've got some fuel line and some some of these fuel fittings and all that to go into the tap I got the tap on it's all can you see that yeah just can so I got a little bit done and I popped the oil around the side there. Um, once again, it's going to be LSA oil. I'm just going to put a multi-grade 2050 in it to start with. Um, it's a petrol tractor. So yeah, we're going to put that in. I think that'll be a good choice for it. And um, before I do that, I have to undo this sender here and put a gauge in so I know what oil pressure we got so and I've got the back on the ute so I well, you run a couple of spares because we run a couple of spares for when we go up to the went to Cape York and that but um, these um, hubcaps are held on by Allen keys and I've got the one for there and you think I can remember where I put the bloody thing well uh, not to worry so so yeah that canopy at the back there the front one here is where I just put that's my normal boot um, this canopy here 
So that opens up. We've got fans in there for when we sleep. Um, all up over the other side and over here, we've got phone chargers and camera chargers and all that sort of stuff. So that's where the gazebo is going today. And yeah, we're having chairs. I've got to take the life jackets out of there yet from yesterday. And but yeah, we'll put all. We're taking a few extra chairs, so if anyone wants to sit and have a yarn, we can all sit and have a nice chat in the sun. And so I think we're taking five chairs in total, a couple of little tarps, and and an umbrella, and yeah, things like that. So what I can do there is actually walk over and chuck cameras or phones or whatever we need to in the canopy, lock it up on charge, and yeah, it, it keeps the whole show up and running for us. So. Um, yeah, that's not bad. I was just saying on the weekend, this this red dirt here, you can scrub that. That's from the Cape, Cape York red dirt, and where it caught it. But um, it's on there too, on the front of that. But um, yeah, I'll have to get some something to wash it off if I can. But normal car wash and all that sort of thing doesn't do it. So, so we'll just shut this so we don't get condensation in there. And there's all the social stuff. HEMA maps, ARB 4x4, they helped me when we were building the ute. I took the STR thing off and put a Bundy Bear shed thing on there just to bloody do it. And when we went to the Cape, we had Bundy Bear shed on the front there and we broke a windscreen. So I just got the new one with the YouTube logo up there this last week. I've had it cut out for a little while, but I just got it on there. So. So yeah, that's it. And yeah, the day's not looking too cloudy really. Um, but yeah, 19 degrees maximum. I reckon we'll get a bit above that today. We'll just see. Um, yeah, sun's just coming up through the bushes there, but the paddock's still looking nice and green.